Okay, well, hello, you guys. Um, this is Trish, of course, and today um, I went ahead and figured it's time to get started on this beautiful book that um, a friend of mine on Facebook and here on YouTube has decided to send to me, and um, she wanted me to kind of go along and do a uh, color along with her and some of these pictures from this book. And um, I would have to say thanks, Jaina. Um, it is a very, very beautiful book. Um, this is my first time ever having one of Nicole Stalker's um, Grayscale books. And yeah, so this is called Beautiful Nature by Nicole Stalker, and it's all grayscale. And it has a lot of beautiful pictures in here. So just kind of flipping through, just trying to give you guys an idea of different pictures on here. Some of these are sideways, like this is like a landscape of some mountains over some water with some clouds and then some clouds um, reflecting back onto the water there. See if you guys can see that. Okay, so and there is like simple pages and there are some more intricate ones. And to tell you guys the truth, um, grayscale does intimidate me a little bit. Um, I haven't really colored in a lot of grayscale images. Um, I've done a couple here and there and um, some from uh, my one of my favorite artists, Bennett Klein from his books. Um, but this is pretty much my first um like all out pure book of a grayscale so thank you janus for sending this to me and hopefully we can um do justice to these pictures in here and let's see so i'm gonna put that away and i did pick out a picture um that we could probably get started on and hopefully I can do it some justice and show you guys how I went about and colored this. Now I have gone in and I have practiced a few times um, using this same picture and um, it did intimidate me a little bit. It is a learning curve for me so if you guys are um, new to grayscale as well, then this will be uh, pretty much a learning a learning process for all of us. And for these, for this picture, I am going to be using my Prismacolor pencils. And I have chosen a few colors. I want to get them out over on this side. I've chosen a few colors that I think I'm going to work with. And what I've worked with in the same colors that I've worked with with my other pictures. Um, but first, okay, let me see if I can get these off to you guys so you guys can have them ready. It is going to be the PC916, which is a canary yellow. Okay, I know the light, all that lighting tends to blur out that foil labeling on the pencil, but that's canary yellow. And then I have some Spanish orange, which is a PC1003. Okay. And let's see, then orange, PC918. Uh, let me see, a pale vermilion, a PC921. A sunburst yellow, a PC917. And some of our darker color is a, again, going to be a pumpkin orange, but which is a PC 1032. And then we've got poppy red, which is PC 922. And then we also have a mineral orange, which is a 10, the PC 1033. Now I'm not saying I'm gonna use all these colors um, as we go along, but I've chosen to pick these colors just so I had enough range with what I'm planning to, um, to do on this image right here. And then of course, I'll also have um, the names of all these, um, of the names of the pencils, the colors and stuff like that listed in my description box below. 
So, as you can see, it's a grayscale pick. There's no color. You can see that there are shadows, there are lines, there's some dark areas, really, really dark areas. Then you got some kind of medium shaded in areas, and you got some some that are really, really light kind of like barely a shadow in there. And then you've got the really, really light areas. Now I've seen a couple of videos where different um, colorists have approached these um, grayscale images in different ways. Some have decided to start with their darks and um, coloring in all their dark areas with their darkest color, and then just layering it upon um, layering with um, some of their medium and their light colors. Some have outlined the areas and sometimes that is good to do especially when you have some images on grayscale that are kind of blurred out. Like this top area right here there's a lot of blur and it's very hard to tell which where you know an image starts and where an image ends. So that's kind of a challenge. But I want to be able to focus on this image right here, which is pretty much, you know, it's nicely defined and you can see where the darks and the lights are. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. I'm going to try to angle my camera here, seeing if I can get a little closer to where you guys can see. There you go, I think. Okay, I'm going to try to focus that a little bit. So there, so this is the picture that we're going to be working with. Um, not quite sure what kind of flower this is, so just forgive me on that. And I guess let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for this piece, like I said, I'm a newbie at grayscale coloring as well. So this is just going to be like a trial and you guys can color along and see if you guys get the same effect like I do. And let's just see where it goes. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start by filling in the darkest areas that I can see around here and just work along that. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and use my pumpkin orange, which is the PC 1032. And I'm just going to go ahead and just... You can see the areas here, like this is like a pretty solid black area. I'm gonna go ahead and just start filling that in with color and just kind of defining that, adding the color in. I mean, the one good thing that I have learned about grayscale is that these, you know, the shadows and the shading is pretty much in there for you and it's done there um, and just waiting for you to go ahead and just add any of your chosen colors and i, I guess you just kind of have to work in your lights your darks and your medium tones in order to get the effect that you want um so when i was been practicing um i tried different ways and i found that i'm going over the darker areas first and I found out, yeah, going over the darker areas first um, was the best way for me just to kind of give me pretty much an outline of where those darkest, darkest shaded areas are. And then I'll just work around that. So, so like I said, this part right here is really, really dark. So I'm just really, you know, saturating that with color. I know this color, this pumpkin orange is a very um, darker color. So it looks, it's like a brownish orange almost. And then I've got some, you know, this, these areas here where it's not so dark, but it's still dark enough that you know it's a shadow. So I'm just lightly going over each of those areas and just following it along with my colored pencil and just adding my color. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing. So you guys can just, you know, watch and see how I do this. You guys can color along if you guys have this, um, have this book as well. 
you know, like I said, this is just something that I've been practicing on since I've gotten this book from Jaina. Which, if I haven't said so, said already, Jaina, thank you very much. I know you're going to be watching this video. So, yeah, and seeing you've got some little dark areas here, like some dots. I'm just going to go ahead and... Go ahead and add that color in there and just trying to work around all the shadowed areas that I see. And just kind of just laying, laying down some of that color. I do have a cat that's... Um, crying for my attention right now so he's all over the place scratching at stuff i have no clue what he's scratching at <laughs> so if you guys you know i'm hearing all these little tidbits of noises in the background that's my cat we've done our morning play date <laughs> he's always ready to play so as you can see i'm just kind of just a little lightly just layering over, coloring over the areas where I see some shadows and some darker areas with my pumpkin orange. There are parts that are very, very light and I'm just going to leave those alone for now. And I'm not very particular at this point. On making sure that my color you know my color lay down is perfect I'm just using soft a soft layering method just kind of using you know circular strokes and just kind of adding color in there if you guys have this picture in front of you you guys will be able to tell you know, and see where there's some shadow areas in there. Like I said, I'm just going over. That's all you guys need to do right now. If you guys are following along, just take your chosen um, chosen color. I mean, you guys don't have to follow the same colors that I am using. Um, if you guys want to use different colors, you guys can do that. Um, the main important thing is just having a mix of dark colors, your medium color, and a light color. Now for me, this is going to be a slow process since I am, you know, doing the video for you guys. If this was something I would be doing on my own, I would be going a little bit faster. But I wanted to make sure you guys are seeing um, what I'm doing here. I know my videos always take forever, but I just try to be as thorough as I can get and give you guys a full color along. So we're pretty much going through the same things, same methods at the same time. And also, I know I've been MIA for like about two weeks, I think, or so. And I haven't been able to make any videos. i just been very, um, very sick lately. I've had a bunch of like appointments, like uh, five, doctor appointments, like five days in a row. And then I had a couple spinal procedures done. And all of that pretty much um, has had me in a lupus flare again. So I've just been kind of down and out of it and just haven't been feeling very well. I'm feeling a little bit better today. That's why I've chosen to go ahead and get started on at least this part of the video. So 
that we so that we have something going on. And I don't want you guys to think that I've been forgetting about y'all out there. I've been getting a couple of emails asking when I'm going to do another video. So here we are. Okay, so I've got some some of this area here of this petal. I'm just going to work one petal at a time so to make it easier for you folks. Like I said, I'm just adding in my darkest color to any of the areas that I see. There are some shadows and, of course, the areas where... I can definitely see that there are darker areas, you know, the darker shadows. And then there's some areas here too that look like, you know, if you want to outline, I have actually done that where I've chosen to use my darkest color and just kind of outline the edges of the petal just to give it a little bit more definition. I just think that it makes the petals defined a little bit more. And you guys don't necessarily have to do this. This is something that I kind of liked when I was doing, you know, practicing on these. just to define my petal. And I'm just using a really, really light touch. I mean, after we add in all of our colors, you know, of our chosen colors together, then everything kind of just blends in together and you guys will see that once we get closer to finishing up this petal. So I'm just using just I'm just using a light touch, circular motions, and just kind of adding in the color until I am pretty much satisfied with the amount of color that I have laid down. And like I said, I'm using the pumpkin orange at this time. And just trying to just really, really add that depth in there of the dark, you know, the darker shade. If you guys see my hands kind of stopping and starting a lot, um, I'm having to readjust, you know, the hold on my pencil. Um, like I said, I've been really, you know, you know, sick the last couple of weeks and I've been kind of having issues um, controlling my pencil stroke. So, and having, finding a good, comfortable way to hold my pencils, which has really, really sucked. You know, I mean, I haven't stopped coloring. I mean, I was coloring, you know, I've been coloring all day, you know, even when I'm sick. And I was just, you know, either practicing doing this picture or um, playing around with some of my other coloring books that were easier to do just so that I was, you know, I had that feeling of that I was coloring. So, yeah, I chose some of my less intricate books that didn't require a lot of, um, I guess, um, attention to it. It was something that I could just add a splash of color and it was just something just to make me feel better. So I think I've gotten the amount of the darkest shade that I want in here so far. So I think we can go ahead and choose like a medium base tone to add on and to layer on 
to layer onto this um, picture. I think my lighting is not really showing all of the areas that I've um, added some color onto. And it may not look the same from what you guys are seeing on screen. So just be aware of that. But I pretty much just shaded in all the areas that were dark and had some, you know, like a medium tone to it with my darkest color. I know some of the areas, like right here, you can't even tell that I've colored in. And I'm looking at that, but I promise you I did. See if I can bring that up close. See, that's what I've gotten so far. Okay. So you guys can see that. Now let me go and try to pick um, another color in here just to add a different touch of color. And I think I'm going to go ahead with my poppy red. And that is the PC922. There you go. See if I can get that in so you guys can see that. PC922. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to go ahead and color on top of all the areas that I have added the darker colors in. And just to give it some an extra color in there and to build up my layer of color. So basically, I'm, you know, for, for this grayscale um, image, I have chosen to approach this by just adding in layers of different, you know, different hues of color. And pretty much I've chosen, it's pretty much the oranges and yellows that I have chosen to use for this image. I don't know why, but that's the color that has popped out to me the most when I was trying to play around with um, deciding what colors I wanted to make this flower. I want to say it's a lily, but I could be very well 100% wrong. I don't know my flowers, although I love coloring flowers. Not funny enough. For me, I just kind of just went ahead what I feel and what I see when I look at a picture as to what colors I want to use. Like I said, I'm just kind of just adding in another layer of color with a poppy red over that pumpkin orange that I used earlier as my first color just to add in a layer and to get my darker areas defined and it makes it easier to follow later on as I keep coloring in this picture. I'm hoping I'll be able to do videos, you know, more videos this week. I'm not sure about next week if I'm going to be able to get any videos up. I will be um, heading out of town. It's my oldest son's um, Air Force boot camp graduation in San Antonio, Texas. So we're going to be um, driving down that way. And I'll pretty much be gone from Wednesday till Sunday night. And then I have two doctor's appointments in the, you know, in the Monday and Tuesday of that next week. So once again, I'll be MIA because of that. And like I said, I will just try to, you know, do videos as I can so that I can upload them to you guys and you guys can choose to follow along if you guys enjoy watching these long, slow videos of mine. And some of these colors I'll be using, I'll be going back and forth with them 
on using them and I will be telling you you know each time that I do you know change colors so I just go back along you know back and forth on the different colors that I use just depending on where I feel that you know a little bit more of a certain color you know should be or a certain area of the image could use a little bit more of that color. And I'm choosing just to do one petal at a time, just to give you guys an idea of how I tackle this. There's different ways, there's no right or wrong way on how to tackle any coloring image. If you guys wanted to add all your darker, you know, shades on all the petals on here, then you guys can do that. It's totally up to you. But for the purpose of this video, I am just attacking one petal at a time. So at least you guys can have one petal, you know, once we're done with adding our colors in here. That you guys can see how it was how, how the colors will build up and how it will turn out okay so i think i've added enough poppy red like i said i just went over all all the areas that i went over earlier with my pumpkin orange so now let's go ahead and choose um let's choose a lighter orange orangey color just to add in some of our yellow orangey areas in there. And actually, I think I'm gonna go ahead with my sunburst yellow on that one. So that's my sunburst yellow. That is the PC 917. And it's really, really hard to see with the lighting and the foil, but what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna use the sunburst yellow and I'm going to go ahead um, and just start filling out all the lighter areas, too, that are on this petal. I mean, there's some really, really light, light areas where it's like, like pretty much beaming white. And I'm just going to add that sunburst yellow in there. And then also these areas where I left white, I'm going to go ahead and fill that out with some color as well. We're going to start adding in our lighter tones. And like I said, I'm not particular on which way and which direction I am going with this because all the colors are going to be blended in and you know, are all going to blend in together towards the end anyway. So just, just, just light strokes, coloring in, going over the bits, all the other areas that I've colored to as well, adding a little bit of that sunburst yellow in there. And then all these areas that are light that I left uncolored. Just filling all those areas in with my sunburst yellow here. I should have gotten the finished pic one of the finished pictures that I have done coloring in this petal. Just don't think I have it near me here. I wasn't even thinking about that when I sat down to do this video. Like I said, right now I'm just adding in my sunburst yellow and all the areas that I left white and along and along as um, adding in the sunburst yellow to the areas where I've already colored in. And I'm not pressing down hard at all. I'm just using light, just light pressure really. 
pretty much just getting all the all the colors kind of meshed in together. And now I'm just, you know, I've gotten that one side filled in that were empty of color filled in. And now I'm just kind of going over everything else that aren't colored as well. Just adding a touch. Adding a little touch of that sunburst yellow. I said I'm not like trying to cover all the areas that I colored in earlier. Just kind of like a touch here and there, just letting my pencil glide through as I go along, filling in the colors. So I have practiced on and off so many times, you know, during the times that I was sick, and to see which method worked best for me to be able to fill in these colors that I've wanted. Okay, I had to pause my video there for a second. My landlord came by to pick up our rent, so I had to give that to him real quick. But here we are back again. And just the same, I'm just using my sunburst yellow and adding some color here and there and to all the areas that are left white. If some of my explanations are a little bit confusing to you folks right now, I do apologize. Like I said, I'm still not 100% feeling well. So my brain is kind of, kind of absent a little bit. So there, added my color in. There you go. So now those white areas, those ones that we left alone earlier and didn't add any colors are now filled in with that sunburst yellow. And then we can start adding in our other colors as well. Okay. Like I said, I just added added in a you know touch of that sunburst yellow to those other darker areas that I've already colored in. There you go. So that's what I've gone so far. See if I can get this guys up close to you so you guys can see kind of where we're heading with this. Okay. I know that oops shaking my camera there. I'm trying to see if I can get it focused a little bit more so you guys can see. I know some of that lighting is just too bright, I think. I think I can take away some of that lighting and see if, it, if I angle that somewhere else so you guys can see it better. But there you go. Okay. Now let's go ahead and start uh, mixing in some other colors in here. I'm readjusting my little lamp here. So hopefully, okay, so I've tried to readjust that light there a little bit, so hopefully you guys can see more of the image that I'm trying to fill in there. Okay, so let's see. Let's go ahead and fill in some more of this petal with some orange, the PC918, just regular orange. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to give this whole petal a wash of this color. And I'm just, like I said, I'm always using light strokes, slight pressure, circular motion. And I'm pretty much just basically just, I'm just adding on, building on layers of color. Just building it on there and just letting the colors come together as we go along. I may or may not use a Prismacolor um, 
colorless blending pencil at the end. It just will all depend on how it looks towards the end. Because there were times when I was practicing that I wasn't quite satisfied with the smoothness and I really wanted to burnish it and I wanted to give it a more shiny look and I really wanted those colors to mesh in together so I did use a colorless blending pencil and then there were others that I was like oh okay that turned out okay I mean I guess it was all depending on you know how I was feeling and how attentive I was to you know adding that color in to that to that flower at that time but I found that just you know just adding in you know light layers of colors have worked the best with just getting all those colors meshed in together and yes I am going over all everything that I have colored in so far I'm just trying to make this petal like really have a lot of depth to it and not just one flat color in, in you know, certain areas <clears throat> that's pretty much what I am just doing right now just adding a kiss of orange to everything And behind the scenes, you know, when I'm not doing videos, I'm also practicing some of the other um, images in this book by Nicole Stalker and trying to find ways that, you know, I could approach it and color it in and give me ideas on how to um, make a video for you guys for, you know, some more color alongs. I'm hoping I'll get this video to you guys out by today. It all just depends on how everything works out. It's another Monday, so yay. Another work week for mo most folks. Yep, so let's take your orange and just lightly add a touch of that orange all over everything again. So we've already made, you know, our, we've already colored in the darkest areas of the petal. So that's already apparent in there. So you can already tell the areas that or the dark has have the darkest shade in them. And I have found that that's the easiest way, you know, at least for me, to determine where those darker areas are is by adding the darker, um, the darker shades of the colors that I've chosen. Kind of gives me a starting point. And then everything else is just a mesh of colors that I've chosen, you know, that will work well together with each other. Just to give that um, grayscale image some character. Give it that depth of color. It's not going to be just one flat color. This one doesn't have a lot of veins. But I've also, with my practicing, I've also learned that you can add your own effects if you wanted to. I mean, I have got, I have, um, I'm going to have to find, 
one of the finished pictures that I did color while practicing and show you that um, I did add some other effects to the petal just to see what it would look like. Just to give you guys an idea of of how you can use, you know, your colors, your darker colors and all that stuff on grayscale images to give your image some different effects if you wanted to. Let me just finish adding in this orange and then I'm going to, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to take a looky see in my little binder here and try to pull out those um that one picture that i did do that i added i had a little a, a little bit of a different touch as i was going along i said experimenting playing with the colors okay so that's a that for, for that one and i'm bringing it up close to the camera so you guys can see on how I've gotten with that so far. See, it's starting to come to life here. I said my process is slow because I just like to build up my colors. Now let me pause my video and I'm going to head over to my binder real quick and I'm going to pull out that other picture that I've done. Okay, so I'm back. I found that picture. And so just to give you guys an idea, I know this is a little bit deviation from the video. But here is a finished image that I did do while I was practicing. And the light is probably not helping much. But as you can see, this is pretty much what I came up with. I didn't finish coloring in the inner areas there. But this is pretty much what I came up with with practicing. And you can see where, you know, I've had the outlines of darker colors and you can definitely see where the shaded areas are, what the darkest color is. And as you can see here, you know, I was practicing on adding different effects. This is the different effects that I um, found that I could put in there by um, adding in a little bit more of the darker hues of the oranges that I was using just to give it some different effects and some lines in there. See, I'm getting that up close. I said, so you guys can choose if you guys, depending on, you know, what you guys feel like in here. You know, some of those lines that I've added in there. I had some that were, you know, farther spread apart. Like I said, it's just something that, you know, that I was doing as I was playing around with. And this one doesn't really have any of those, you know, extra effects lines that I have um, added on added into so that's what I was you know trying to see, mean by um you know just intensifying some of those um those sh shaded in darker areas and just adding your own effects and you see you can tell like in this uncolored version of the flower that there are some kind of like shadowed areas that look like lines and that's how I pretty much came up with the idea of adding you know my own effects instead of just coloring in and filling in the colors you know like I'm doing with this one is to darken up the areas where you have these shadows and just kind of work that in with the rest of the colors as you're you know blending in your colors and just making making that effect and that's what I've, I've gotten doing that so that's the result that I've gotten so like I said this was a practice piece that I was doing so yeah so I just wanted to show you guys how I did that and what you guys can pretty much you know expect with this video is what this you know that this flower is gonna turn out to be like Okay, so back again to what we were doing. Like I said, I'm, I really, 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 this lamp of mine 
I mean, I have one of those clip, big old clip-on lamps that I'm using for extra light just because my apartment doesn't have a lot of good lighting. And I'm planning to get, you can hear all that crinkling in the background. That's me readjusting the, the, the lamp and it's just ah, all crinkly. But yeah, soon I'm planning to get a, a better lamp that I really, really want to use. You know, one of those that have like different, different, um, um, which I'm gonna call, I don't know if they're arms or legs where you can focus them everywhere and whichever way, way you want. But yeah, that's my, that's my goal. I'm kind of on the lookout for one of those at the moment. Okay, let's get back to this again. And let me see. So I'm going to go ahead now and I want to go ahead and just keep adding, adding more color adding different colors in here and I'm going to go ahead and pick up my pale, pale vermilion my PC 921 okay and those areas like these areas right here where I've added in the darkest colors I'm going to go ahead and color those in again I'm going to add more color to that, deepening in the darker shades. I'm really just trying to follow the, the um, already shaded in areas of this image and just smushing different colors together. <laughs> I guess that's like a little piece of lint or something at the end of my pencil there that was bugging me so i'm just mushing all these colors in together just to give it some some depth i really don't like just just a flat looking image i like it to have different colors here and there you know different color within the same pretty much you know Colors that work together, colors that are in the same um, color family. So I am just adding this pale vermilion and just coloring it on, adding it on to all the darkened areas that I have already filled in with color. It's trying to make those shaded, you know, darker areas stand out a little bit more. And always um, when I'm coloring, unless there's a specific, specific reason, I use, I just use light pressure. Light pressures and circular strokes to try to cover up as much as the, you know, the white of the paper up. That's all I'm doing right now is just kind of just going over again. Like I said, I'll be going over colors back and forth, adding color here and there. And that's all because I, you know, it's all just depends on your, on how you would like to have your, you know, your flower turn out and how you're feeling. Um, well, you know, he feel that you know, one area might need a little bit more of a certain color, needs a little bit more depth, needs a little bit more darkness, or if it needs to be lightened up a little bit. That's going to be all in your own per, um, personal preference on how you want your image to look. And for me, I really want those um, already shaded gray, you know, gray areas that the, you know, the, the grayscale image provides. I really want those areas to really, you know, to really kind of pop out and and be apparent without um, without really overtaking too much, you know, of the image. I want it to be apparent, but I also want it to blend in, if that makes any sense.
So that's all I'm doing right now. It's like I said, it's a lot of back and forth with different colors and just meshing them together. And you guys can practice, you know, doing this. If you guys have the book, make, you know, if you're able to make copies, make a couple of copies and just practice. I mean, it's pretty much how I've been doing it because like I, you know, I've been, I said earlier in the video, I don't normally color a lot of grayscale because yes, um, the main reason is it is intimidating to me. So I have my fears. But I was really also excited at the chance of being able to um, to learn a little bit more. So I'm, I was very, very um, stoked when Jaina um, suggested this book and she sent me this book so that, you know, I can get my practice on and then I can do a color along for her as well. So it's going to take me probably a little bit to get, you know, fully comfortable with coloring grayscale images, but I do intend on practicing a bit more so I can just be a little bit more comfortable with the whole process. So basically my way right now is probably not what you guys have been, you know, if you, you know, watching other videos probably not the same <laughs> approach, but I just feel that coloring should be, you know, it's your, it's your image, it's your image that you want to portray. So it's all on how you perceive the image to be. Okay, so now that I've got that pale vermilion pretty much covering all those areas that I have already colored in, I'm going to pick up again my pumpkin orange. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually need a little bit, a little bit of a sharp, sharper, um, whoops, there I go knocking my camera over. Sharper tip because I want to outline a little bit more the edges of the leaves or the petals should I say sorry so got my because I pumpkin orange the PC 1032 and I just want to outline some more just kind of going over the edges of each petal with this pumpkin orange. I want to be able to define that petal just a, just a bit more. So I'm just basically outlining the edges of this. Later on, it will all be blended together, you know, once we're down to that part. Okay. Got a little bit of area here where, I mean, it's still bright. I'm leaving, there's like a, like a hairline area right at the tip of this petal here. It is very, very, very bright. So I'm going to leave that as it is. I mean, I colored that earlier with the um, with the sunburst um, sunburst yellow, and I'm just going to leave that as its little highlight. Okay. And now I'm going to use my same pumpkin orange that's in my ham, and I'm going to go over more of the areas here in this bottom part of this petal, and I'm going to intensify again. The darker areas. So I'm going to go over it and just color it in a little bit more. So 
still using light, you know, the light circular strokes, light pressure. Just trying to add a little bit more depth. Ooh, and it is pouring rain all of a sudden right now. Oh my goodness, I just, I'm sitting here. The next thing I know is I hear a pour of rain. Like I said, I'm just adding a little some more depth to all the dark, you know, to the darkest areas here. I'll be blending in more colors to that later on. I just really, really, really want to add more depth in here to really intensify those areas that are shaded in already. So I see some areas that are kind of feels like to me it needs a little bit more more of a darker shade to it so that's one of the reasons why I'm choosing to go back over it again with this pumpkin orange and then I'm also going to add some little flecks you know kind of a little bit of reddish yellow flick um, flecks of color in there flex flex of color <laughs> my brain can't even determine how to pronounce that name right or which word I want to use uh -huh. there you go so just intensifying that up a little bit there this middle area there I just don't want those that, you know, those darkest hues and the darkest shaded areas to be lost once I start, you know, start adding in more color and blending in some of the other oranges and yellows that I'm planning to use. So I'm just really just trying to make sure that that doesn't get lost by just adding a touch more color to those areas as well as adding that outline to the edges of the petal. Especially right in the inner inner pockets here of this petal, I really do want that to be dark. I think that's like the greatest part of grayscale images is, you know, those darkened, shaded, shaded, darkened, um, shaded areas are already there for you. And it's just, you know, up to you to add, add your color into it and just to follow that as an outline of where your shading needs to be and just to work around that. I mean, it takes a lot of practice. I can tell you that for sure. Okay. So I think this area right here needs just a tad bit more darkness. And I'm just, like I said, I'm using a, just light layers because I know I'm going to be adding, um, adding in more layers of other colors. And I want to make sure that my I'm not ruining the tooth of my my paper by you know pushing it pushing it all down and burnishing it off right away. Okay, so there's that. Oop, got pencils running around here like crazy, and let's take a look and see which one I want to use next. 
I think I want to add, where did that one go? There we go, my Spanish orange. Okay, I'm picking up my Spanish orange. My PC 1013, if you guys can even see that. Okay, I think that's the best that's going to do. And I'm going to use this to pretty much kind of, you know, go over the shaded areas and then add a little bit more touch of a yellow, yellow, yellowish orange, you know, hue to the petal. And so here we go. Just going to add that on. I'm using a little bit more pressure this time. Not using a whole lot of pressure. I mean, just like a light medium pressure just so that I can begin to start blending those colors in together with each other. Just so that they can start mending and mushing in together and starting, you know, and start to come together. Like I said, unless, you know, like I said earlier, unless I specifically um, have a um, intention of the intention of using using a more pressure to my pencil, I just usually color, you know, add color in using light layers. So this is just a little bit more, um, a little bit more pressure than just my lightest pressure that I normally use. Trying to get those edges, you know, blended in a little bit more. Just going over the whole petal with it. I'm just starting, just barely starting to bring some of the colors together. I still have some other intentions for some of the brighter, you know, the lighter areas on here. I'm not quite done yet, but I did want to add my kiss of more orangey in there, orangey yellow tone in there. Just wanting to get everything covered up. I'm not really keeping my pencils like super, super, you know, superly pointed sharp. You know, when doing, you know, you know, something like this where I am blending and meshing colors in together. So I usually, you know, I found that it's better to have just a little bit of a blunted pencil when you're blending colors in together. But if I needed like areas where to be a little bit more defined and fine-tuned and all that stuff, then yes, I usually, I like having pointed pencils. And I'll, it all depends pretty much really on what I'm working on. But for this purpose of just trying to bring all the colors together and blending them, it's not as, um, it's not as important to me to have super pointy pencils.
I mean, yeah, it will get to a point where it will start to bug me and I'll give it a little, a little twist in the sharpener, but right now I'm just kind of mushing the, the colors together and blending that in there. Okay. All right. So that's that with that um, Spanish orange. And now I want to come on in and add add some of my poppy red okay I'm going to pick up my poppy red and I'm going to start giving these lighter areas that we have you know now it's for more of a yellow yellowy tone let's see if I can get that light Ugh. see if I can get that a little bit better looking I'm going to start adding this poppy red and just adding a little bit more a little bit more color and a little bit more you know dimension and I'm just so you can see I'm just using my poppy red and just adding some flicks of like vein like um, strokes in there you can see I'm just you know just trying to add to add more character to this area you know or to this petal I should say just adding some just shading that in there. And then right in here in the middle, I'm just going to add a touch of that poppy red. Just kind of along that, those yellow, you know, because you can tell from looking at your picture that there are more lighter areas of, you know, that orangey yellowish color. So I'm just trying to add little bit more effects without covering totally covering up those um that area where it's a you know has that a little bit more orange yellow tones I don't want it to look too blah but I also wanted to add a little bit more character to the petal and I'm just kind of bringing that down over in this corner here, blending that out. I know some of the colors you guys are probably wondering, it's like those colors are so close together. I mean, what's the difference? And if you, you know, you guys, you know, color and you guys know there is a difference even with the slightest hue. There's always a tad of difference, tad of different character, I, you know. Okay, so I said, so all I'm doing, I'm just adding like little flex. It's not like a straight um, line per se. It's more like kind of like just added in there. It's kind of like, like, like you're shading it in there. And I'm not using a heavy hand at all. I'm actually just using light pressure and just kind of eyeballing it. Because I don't want just a straight line. I want it to look like it's part of the flower or the petal. And that's it's a part of its, of its characteristic. Hey, so maybe I just changed this petal and, you know, this flower into a whole new <laughs> different flower. Who knows? But it's just, you know, what I feel like doing. And that pretty much goes for anybody, you know, for anybody. It's your own. It's your own coloring. It's your own artwork. You can give it any effect that you want. Okay, so if you can see, it looks a little, right now, it looks like it's got different effects on it. Different kind of, you know, striations, lines and stuff in there. But once we start blending in more of our colors, it's going to look more uni uniform. And it's just going to blend out pretty nicely. Okay, now let's try to get our color that we want to use to blend this in with. 
And I do want a little bit more orangey, orangey yellow to blend it in together. And I think I'm going to use my Spanish orange for this one. Okay, let me sure I pick it up the right one and not my sunburst yellow. So there, I'm going to pick up my Spanish orange. 1003. And now I'm going to once again use this um, Spanish orange to blend all the colors in together. So I'm going to just use Spanish orange and just go over every area. with, um, I would have to say a medium, some medium pressure, but keeping it at the, um, keeping, keeping the circular strokes going on just so that I can try to cover as much as the white of the paper. And I'm really just trying to you know, blend all those colors in together. And as you can see, you know, the colors are starting to blend and those areas where I've added, you know, and layered in some darker hues are still very apparent and it's just leaving some light effects in that petal. So you're basically gonna use this, you know, your, this, you know, this um, Spanish orange to blend everything together until you're pretty much satisfied on how it looks. If you know while you're blending or after you're blend, you know, done blending these, you know, the Spanish orange in with this petal, and you're taking a look at your, your piece and you're seeing that oh, maybe this area can be lightened up a little bit more. You are, you know welcome to lightened up areas where you feel that needs to be lightened or if you feel like a certain area especially down here in this this area that needs a little bit more darkening you can do that as well i mean once you're taking a, a look at your piece and you're seeing that oh you know, like a certain area over here doesn't look as balanced as the other side. And you guys want that balance, then, you know, feel free to, you know, to tone it up, to, to blend in, a, you know, a darker or lighter color. To get that tone that you want. So that's what I'm doing right now is just blend using my Spanish orange. Like I said, you guys can see my the way I'm holding my pencil has been changing quite a bit. And that's like I said, it's just because I'm I mean having having issues. I mean part of lupus is you know the joint joint pain and muscle issues, so I have to kind of adjust so I can feel, you know, feel comfortable. There we go. So I'm just continuing with this whole petal until I have it covered in with this Spanish orange. I'm just really, really wanting just those colors to blend in nicely without having any sharp beginnings or sharp ends. Kind of want to make it look like everything is supposed to be in its place. Still keeping my same circular um, strokes and a little bit more, like I said, medium, medium pressure just so that I can get the colors to mesh in together but 
not so much pressure that I'm totally, totally burnishing my paper and losing, um, <clears throat> losing the tooth of the paper. Not quite yet. I want to give it, you know, a little bit more look over, a bit of a look over before I decide to really, you know, really do a good burnishing on it. And it's up to you if you want to burnish. If you like, the, you know, some of the lights of the paper, you know, the light area, the tooth of the paper to show, then, you know, that's your own taste and you don't have to burnish. Um, I do like um, a finished, which I mean, like, you know, shinier petals. So I burnish for that reason because I like it. But if you don't like it, you don't have to. So I have lots of practice to do on grayscale images. And that's pretty much, you know, what I've been focusing focusing on, even though I haven't done the, you know, a lot of videos on it yet, is learning. Especially lately, like I said, I don't know what's been going on that I've been having a lots of flare ups. Okay, so there you go. That's that done with um, after I've gotten done with using that Spanish orange to blend the colors together. And let me see, let me turn off that main big old light that I have and see if you guys can see a little bit better. I'm not sure if it's going to make a difference or not. Focus, see if you guys can see. But you guys can see, <clears throat> like, can tell that you know I'm trying to get this in an angle that there are still like very very um, apparent lines there okay and you guys can see where the some of the, that reddish poppy red and the pumpkin orange that I've used in there and the mineral orange and the sunburst yellows that are used in there and there's still a bit of white of the paper showing through. And the paper that I'm actually using is, um, a, is, Canson, is a Canson mixed media paper. So it does have a lot of tooth to it. And so if you really want that burnish look like how I do, or if you guys like some, you know, you know that white of the paper, you know, white of the paper showing through, then you guys can leave it and just um, tone it tone it down to how you're liking, you know, you're liking to get some of those streaks out. I mean, right now, if you're seeing it, it looks a bit streaky and you can tone that down by, um, you know, just using like a medium, like an orange, whatever, an orange color and just blend that in a little bit more. Use your yellows um, if you want to for a little bit more toning down. But right now, for me, I like the way it looks. And so I want to start um, burnishing my paper. And I'm actually going to use my Prismacolor colorless blender. Because I have a feeling that once I use my colorless blender, this guy right here, yep, our colorless blender, that all the colors, once I get them, you know, burnished down and blended in, it's all going to come in, come together. And a lot of these, you know, these lines, oops, my, my camera's out of focus here. Let me try to get focused in on there. See if I can zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see once I start getting, using my blender in there. I know the lighting's not the best, but hey, but it's going to start blending in together and it's going to give me the effects that I want. Okay. So, Let's go ahead and begin and I'll show you. So using my colorless blender, now I am actually really starting to use a lot more pressure because I want the whites of the paper to pretty much be gone. I wanna blend, really, really blend all the colors together. I'm really burnishing it this time and I chose to use um, this colors blender because I don't want to add any more color in. But I don't want to take any color out either. 
So I've chosen to use my beloved Prismacolor Colors Blender. And I'm really just wanting to really burnish it. I want a nice shiny petal. And you can hear how scratchy that is probably. It just sounds that way. I don't know why it does, but it does. And I'm just really just going over the whole petal with the blender. It's going to soften up those streaky looking lines. And it's just going to make the whole color, I mean the whole, you know, all the colors just kind of look just balanced and blended in together like it's meant to be there as nature wanted it to be. So <clears throat> some people like to use, um, you know, I, I do too, I like to use like the white um, Prismacolor Premier Pencil for blending, but not on this um, image. I found that it it took away some of the color and dulled it down a bit. So my best my best friend in this case for this um, for this piece has been my colorless blender. Oh, like I said, I'm just using it all over. I'm just really just blending in everything. It's not going to take away those, um, you know, like those lines that I added on earlier, but it's going to blend them in with the rest of the petal and the rest of the colors and make it look like it's supposed to be there. It's going to become uniform <laughs> and just come together. <clears throat> so that's what I'm just doing is, and you guys are seeing me do, is I'm just going over the whole petal with my colors blender until I am satisfied with how it's becoming, you know, it's starting to look. I'll go over certain areas if I feel that I, you know, want to or it needs it. Oh, and for those that, you know, do watch my videos and you know, and, and wait for me to be able to upload more, you know, color alongs. And you guys notice that I am not, you know, I haven't done it in like a week or two. Don't be alarmed. <clears throat> like I said, I just tend to, um, you know, get, get sick a lot. I mean, I have lots of different um, chronic illnesses. And so sometimes I'm just having to take a break. And before I can fully feel, you know, you know, like attentive enough to be able to um, put up together a coloring video. But you guys are welcome to, you know, send me a message either here on YouTube or on my Facebook page. I have my personal Facebook page, you know add it on to my description box so any questions or comments or anything like that you can either post them on here or you can reach me on Facebook just know that sometimes I just need a little bit more rest than usual and I just can't I can't help it I don't know I don't know usually what my day is going to look like until you know, I wake up. <laughs> now let's see if you guys can tell the difference. I mean, I have only done this left hand side 
and I'm going to hopefully try to see if you guys can tell a little bit of a difference. I mean, I can tell from just looking at it on my, you know, on my end that you can tell that after I use the colorless blender that the colors seem to come along, you know, blend in a little bit more together with each other versus this side on the right where I have not yet used the colorless blender. And you can still see the whites of the paper and some pretty strong um, marks that I have um, added on in there. So that's pretty much the difference. And you guys are seeing that, I hope. And hopefully you guys are understanding what I, you know, I'm just trying to explain to you guys on how I'm going about this petal. So like I said, I'm just blending along until... I'm pretty satisfied with how everything looks. And just, you know, getting rid of some of that, you know, white, the white of the paper from the tooth of the paper. Some of that darker color, it depends on, um, how you consider yourself to you know to color like you know with a light with light pressure medium pressure it all depends on how much color you lay down on all the previous layers and how much of that darker color you're going to drag out because everybody has a different you know hold on their pencil and how they what they would consider their light their light pressure medium pressure hard pressure, super de duper pressure. And I know sometimes I I tend to um, have a death grip on my pencils. And actually on those days, I don't, um, when I have, when I'm having trouble, you know, with, um, with my pencils, I switch to my, you know, I switch to not using my Prismas because you know Prismas you know they are soft soft leaded wax base and they do leave that waxy um, that waxy kind of effect if you you know using too much pressure which you know you can still wipe off and continue on but I switch over to you know some different pencils like like my my um, the so macro Marco Raffines or to my um, my Prismacolor Scholar pencils. Because yeah. I just find it's easier to work it I find it easier to work with if I'm having like a hard day and I'm having a hard day, you know, time coordinating, coordinating my hands to work, to color. But yeah, I do love Prismacolor just because of the way, you know, it lies down, it's soft, it's smooth. They blend very nicely with each other and very easily. So they are my pretty much right now favorite um, pencils. I recently um, acquired some Faber-Castell Polychromos and those are my dream set pencils and I'm still learning how to use them, still trying to get myself acquainted with them and you know trying to learn the different ways that they work with each other and they blend and how they lay down their color but I do love them and hopefully one of these one of these days while I'm doing my videos I'll be able to take them out too and use those okay let me see I'm trying to I'm trying to see if I have given this petal any justice yet is that I'm just blending along until I feel that I have enough 
coverage that I blended the colors in enough to my liking. And that should go for the same for you guys. I say if you guys don't want to blend and you guys are able to, you know, fill in the petal in with your colors, you know, you can play around with your colored pencils and just use your colored pencils, you know, to fill in the colors and get good coverage and get the effect you want and go for it. But this is what I have come up with so far. I'm just trying to see if I can blend in any more of those colors in there. I mean, I hope, I hope my vid, this video made some kind of sense to you guys. Like I said, I, I'm still pretty much a newbie when it comes to grayscale coloring. So that's it's a learning curve for me right now. And hopefully we're learning together. And I do intend to, like I said, practice more so I can become a little bit more proficient in it and can give better videos, video color alongs with you folks. Okay, I think I have burnished enough <laughs> and blended enough that I think my paper does not want to take anymore and that's what you usually find once you've gotten your your paper burnished okay so let's see let me try to get you guys to see that so that is what we've I've come up with so far i know the lighting is a little bit weird and it's part i don't know how you guys are seeing it it all depends on everybody's monitor configurations and how the color shows up but yeah, so depending on what angle you look at, it looks a little bit more streaky, but I guarantee you when you're looking at it in person, it is not. And, but that's what I have gotten with that one petal so far. Okay. So I just wanted to get this one video out just to show you guys how I went about and started this, um, started this picture right here. And the same concept is pretty much going to be the same for all the petals. So I can do another video if you guys want. Just let me know and so we can continue the rest of this if you guys wanted me to. And we can, you know, try to learn together. Or if you guys feel that this is enough, um, either if I've helped or not, just, you know, let me know. And like I said, it's a learning curve for all of us. So the more comments and suggestions I get, um, the more I'll learn from you guys on what you guys want. So yeah. So like I said, I hope that um, I helped a little bit. And like I said, let me know if you guys want me to finish up the rest of these petals right here. And I will keep this aside so that if you guys want me to do another video, I am more than happy to get that done for you guys. Okay, so until the next time, guys, thanks for watching.